What's poppin'? T subs and T squads. So I just finished watching um Bad Boys Los Angeles. This is season one, episode. Hold on, let me get my life. Episode seven, the more the merrier. Uh, so the episode continues where I left off at, and that was with Mulan windmilling on um Carry On Child. So um Carry On in his confessional says that they don't ever really let them square up, so he's just getting in his head. Really be really be feels like the issues that he's dealt with pertaining to with his father and the physical abuse um deals in a lot of what's going on with him. And I got to tell you, I totally understand what really be is saying. Even in this moment, when it came down to this situation, carry on took more pride in being able to say, yeah, nigga, you swung on me. You hit me. You hit me in my chest. You hit me in my face a few times, but I'm still standing. I ate that. Much like how he took more credit in feeling like, yeah, Moolah, yeah, you fought me. Yeah, you made my lip bleed. Yeah, my lip was bleeding down to Zeus, but I ate those. You ain't knocked me out. I'm still standing, nigga. It is what it is. You steady talking with a bloody ass lip. You know what I mean? Um, and I get what Riley was saying. Is 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 it that? Yeah, that is traits of a person that was abused as a child. It is. He took more pride in being able to say, yeah, you hit me, I ate those, versus taking pride and standing up for himself when he has to. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the type that he would talk a whole bunch of shit, but then everybody else got to come in and save the day for him. And that's not fair either. Carry on. I'm just saying. Really make some really good points. And carry on. I really feel like you really need to go lay down on somebody couch, baby. And if that make you triggered, oh, the fuck well. That's the problem. Everybody wants to tiptoe around it. Stop tiptoeing around it and call it what it is. Like, you the type of person, carry on, that more than likely will get somebody seriously hurt or killed behind taking up for you because you will just run your mouth. Knowing that you're really not about that life. See, most of these people that are up here, they really had to fight in real life. They didn't grow up with the household name of Franklin. They didn't grow up going to private schools or whatever the case may be where you can have all that mouth and, and you run less of a risk of them trying to run up on you and fight you versus dealing with people that grew up in the inner city and grew up and you know what I'm saying, public schools, and they've been put in predicaments and situations where they really had to defend themselves. And it's not fair to them to have to come up in here as an adult to have to defend you because you want to sit up and run off, shoot off with the mouth as if you're about that life. And then with a per that can this shit from Real Housewives of Potomac. That's what I'm talking about. But we're going to move on. Miss Anthony, you is a flip flopping ass mess and you really starting to irk my nerve. Now, I'm, I'm giving you I, I was giving you a chance because, you know, you and Maddie, good homegirls and good Judy's assistants and stuff like that. But you just you you when you was outside with carry on, you was on his side with everything that he had to say. You agreed with it. Not only did you agree with it, you added in different other bullet notes as to why you agreed with carry on and his feelings as it pertained to Mulan. Then when what happened happened in the thing, now it becomes, oh, I'm trying, I was trying to be there for him. You know, I was trying to hear him outside. And it's just like listen, Miss Anthony, pick a damn side. E e either you form or you not. Either you agree with, with, with everything that he had to say with him or, or not. Now, I'm not saying that you got to stand, stand in the line, you know, stand in the lion's den or stand in the lion's gate for him or whatever. But pick a damn side. Jesus. Or if not, shut up. Stay out of the drama and stay out of the beef. Don't assert yourself in it. Don't try to break it up. Don't try to mediate. Just stay out of it. Because it's, it's whatever. Um, moving on. Um, 
Mula is the voice of reason, and I'm glad that somebody was because he's right. Like y'all sitting over here fighting the eye again, fussing like some little bitches after we just set up in here and made a song. Like it's other stuff that we can do instead of sitting up here finding a reason to have to fuss and argue and fight and, and win Mila Ho. Like I understood where he was coming from, and I won't mad at it because I, I was on his side. Like there are way more of the stuff that y'all can do in the house versus all of this made up put together beef and trying to fight and all the rest of this shit like i was on his side period so carry on doesn't apologize mulan really don't apologize either i mean mulan get first of all in my opinion carry on didn't have nothing to apologize about the person that should have been apologetic in this situation was Milan, and he should have gave a, a genuine ass apology instead of saying, I apologize, but no, there is no but. You flew off at the handle. You flew off at the mouth with that boy looking for a moment and looking for some camera time. And you took it way too far and he reacted to what you did. Don't get me wrong. Do, does he have antagonistic ways? Yeah, he does. But in this situation, Mulan, you started that shit in the studio while all of that grandstanding and all of that snap, crackling, and popping that you was doing. You Anyway, Relly goes to try to talk to Carry On again about him being antagonistic, what I was talking about, and never swings back. Like I said, Relly, I appreciate you for trying to be the voice of reason, but just leave Carry On be. Carry on is he got to be in his 30s at this point. We both was little boys together. Um, he, he feel the way he feel, and he's never going to see it from your side. And he's just one of them people where you just got to let him get his ass beat until he figure it out on his own. It's called tough love. Um, so production tells the guys about them bringing in Jonathan from Dallas, Texas, honey. And he's a celebrity hairstylist child. His, his hands done grace the scaps of um Meg the Stallion and um Nicki Minaj and, and 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 countless others honey okay his his hands don't go at in and common folks scat like ours it it, it being a high end scat and I'm down for it um so he comes in let me tell you something I see it for Miss Jonathan Miss Jonathan is a big personality and I love it he come in with that southern down home Texas type of uh zest and flair about himself and i was actually here for it so he gets straight to the chase about figuring out about his room child where he gonna sleep he said he a big bitch and he ain't sharing he ain't sharing no twin bed with nobody but he will share a room with somebody and if he got to fight for that bitch he don't mind whooping ass to get it and i was down for it so um Mula says that Jonathan stunted on an interview with him that he was supposed to do on his podcast, but Jonathan couldn't do it. And Jonathan said that, you know, listen, he was booked and he was busy. I guess he double booked and, you know, he went to where the money reside. And I'm not mad at Miss Jonathan for that, which lets me know that your podcast is cute. But he'll rather go and bust some heads and bust some scats for some real damn money and some real damn exposure than to be sitting up there fooling around with your little yang yang around the house ass podcast. No shade, Mula, because I've never seen your podcast or your interviews and I ain't giving you much. But what I will say, though, Mula, is if you love the girls, just say that. <laughs> okay, if you love us LGBTQ folk, just say that. Like, Mula, did, did, uh, another, another sugar cube your ass that's set up here and interview. You interview Milan. You interview William the Saddest. You was about to interview Miss J Miss Jonathan, but um, she'll she'll rather bust a scat than to set up here and do some shit with you for for the Lolo. <laughs> if you love us, just say that, Mula. Mula, you love us down, baby. We love you too, boo. Just come on out, Miss. It's okay, sir. Come on out. We'll be we'll gladly welcome you in, child. Anyway, um, so Jonathan goes to look for his room, and of course he wants the master, and the master is um Mulan's. Uh, we gonna get to that in a second. Um. So Jonathan straight up said that 
He want Mulan room. And if Mulan had to fight Miss Anthony for that room, the bitch, she just gonna have to fight me for the room too. I know that's right. Look, I live for Miss Jonathan. I do. I live for her. I live for her energy, baby. I do. I was here for it. Um, I was. I was here for it. Uh, so they went from there and they migrated from there to the damn closet. And I agree with Scotty and Maddie. I really feel like that Mulan and Jonathan and, and Jonathan the fuck before. Now, who was the top and who was the bottom? I don't really know. That ain't really none of my business. But um, whether they used a two-headed dildo and bumped coochies, again, that ain't none of my business. But I agree with them. It's some sexual energy there because any other time, Mulan just would have went on ahead and popped off. He was just real stoic and real just like, and that's what made me feel like who was the top and who was the bottom. Because you turned into a real submissive little bitch when it came down to Miss Jonathan. And this was a far cry from the Mulan that just ran up on pole defenseless ass carry on who everybody know can't fight or defend themselves. So why would you fight him? You literally fought the weakest person in the damn house. You fucked up your leg fighting the weakest bitch in the damn house, windmilling on. You fought real. Like, I don't get it. But when it came down to Miss Jonathan, you was just. I hope John, I hope Miss Jonathan tear your ass up. I hope Jonathan tear your ass up from left and left because you were sitting up here and it like even on down to this next scene when you call Rio to come down there and you call Rio to, 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 to do what? I don't know because I ain't heard nowhere where Rio walked the dog on Miss Jonathan. I ain't heard nowhere around there where that's what happened. I didn't hear that. If that's what happened, that's what I would have heard. I ain't heard that. What I heard was Miss Jane at the came right there and, and, and tossed shit up and shook shit up and did what the hell she was supposed to. That's what I heard. This, Mulan, this goes back to what I said before about Chenny Houston not being your damn friend. See, you rolled up here off of the uh, riding this strength in this wave of, oh, I'm cool with Nality. Nality like me. Nality, you know, not Nality. Nala, uh, uh, Natalie, Chinnily, Chin, yeah, her, um, yeah, me and her good Judy's, you know, she made me the leader of the house, she let me have a master bedroom, blah, 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 but yet, she brought somebody up in there that could really fuck you up, and he made a beeline straight towards you, which makes me feel like it's some validity into what they were saying about Natalie bringing in Miss Jonathan solely to bring down Mulan off of his pedestal. I believe every word of that, but you running around here cap caping for her, acting like she your damn friend. Girl, please, that bitch ain't your damn friend. You just a paycheck to her. I'm just saying. And it's funny because you up here hollering and rapping. You from you from Detroit or whatever. Everybody from the 313, put your motherfucking hands up to follow me. It was all of that. When it came down to carry on again, the weakest link in the house. But when it's a bitch that can really get with that ass and she went and made a beeline slam towards you, now your leg messed up. Um, it's hurting you to fight people. You, you know, it's breaking your heart to fight people, even though every fight that you've been in, you started and, and created. But you're so sad about it and you hate it. And you hate it that it had to happen. So damn bad. Like, listen. Whatever Miss Jonathan give Mulan, Mulan, I'm here for it because that, that bitch deserve it because she really is irking my damn skin. Like she is the epitome of the most negative stereotype um, of, 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 the gay, of, of the gay person that I've ever seen. Caddy for no reason. Messy for no reason. Petty for no reason. A flip flopper. You sitting up here, you Billy Badass with everybody, but yet when it comes to Miss Jonathan, you a scared, timid little girl. Like, I just. That's it. That's all I got. I ain't got no more to give y'all. Y'all drop down in the comments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about last night's episode. And until next time, I'm going to holler at y'all later. Bye.